According to Spain's weather agency, the Spanish coast will be 3 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius hotter. In some areas of Spain are expected to hit or remain around 43 degrees Celsius this week as a sweltering heat wave continues to hang over the country. Imagine a continent that boasts of lush green landscapes and breathtaking scenery. Yet beneath its natural beauty lies a darker truth. As you look at the map of Europe on your screen, you may not realize that there is a desert right in the heart of the continent. The Tabernas Desert, located in Spain, is often overlooked by many people, but its expansion is becoming a major problem. With nearly one-fifth of the Spanish territory at risk of turning into a desert, the government has taken action to combat this issue. But this isn't just a problem in Spain. Across Europe, water and wind erosion, coupled with low organic matter content, are causing millions of hectares of land to degrade. So how can we turn the tide and restore these damaged landscapes? In this video, we'll explore how Spain is using innovative techniques to turn its desert into a green forest, and how these methods could be applied across Europe to combat desertification. As the world continues to consume natural resources at an alarming rate, Earth Overshoot Day looms closer and closer each year. In fact, last year, on July 29, humanity had already consumed all the natural resources that the Earth can generate in a year using resources equivalent to 1.75 planets. But it's not just the future capacity for regeneration that we're reducing. Many countries are also at risk of losing fertile soil. Sadly, this includes several EU countries such as Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece, Cyprus, Bulgaria and Romania, all of which are vulnerable to desertification due to increased temperatures, droughts and less precipitation. As the European Court of Auditors warns, this could lead to serious consequences such as lower food production, soil infertility, decreased natural resilience and reduced water quality. The looming threat of desertification and land degradation is not only an environmental concern, but also poses a major threat to the economic model of production in the EU. To combat this issue, the EU needs to not only intensify its efforts to fight climate change, but also establish a dedicated legal framework to address desertification and land degradation. The European Court of Auditors has emphasised the need for a specific plan of action to combat this problem, as existing plans such as the Common Agricultural Policy, the EU Forest Strategy or the EU Strategy on Adaptation to Climate Change do not directly focus on the issue of desertification. But what exactly is desertification? It's a process where once fertile land turns into a desert by losing its flora and fauna. This can happen due to a variety of reasons, including drought, deforestation, climate change, human activities, or improper agriculture. Desertification occurs as a result of human-made activities and climate change, and it's when a certain biome transforms into a desert biome. In other words, it's the degradation process of land caused by man and nature. The emergence of desert-like conditions due to a combination of changes in climate patterns and human activities is a type of land degradation that occurs in and around the world's arid regions. Although there is a great deal of debate surrounding the pace, nature and causes of desertification, it undoubtedly has numerous health implications. One group of these impacts is linked to indirect consequences of desertification, such as mass migrations, poverty, water and food shortages, and disputes over land and water resources. Another group of health issues is related to reduced water quality, which can be caused by either insufficient access to water or an excessive buildup of salt and particles. However, the most widespread health implications of desertification are associated with the decline in air quality caused by dust particles accumulating in the air. These mineral aerosols can result in respiratory difficulties, heart disease, silicosis, conjunctivitis, meningococcal meningitis and valley fever. The United Nations Environmental Program UNEP, states that regions where the ratio of total annual precipitation to potential evapotransportation ranges from 0.05 to 0.65 are at risk of desertification. This accounts for about 40% of the world's terrestrial area 
and includes regions such as Northern Africa, Southwestern Africa, Southwestern Asia, Central Asia, Northwestern India and Pakistan, Southwestern USA and Mexico, Western South America, Spain and much of Australia. These regions are home to an estimated sixth of the world's population. The term desertification can evoke a dramatic image of fertile land being swallowed by sand, leading the United Nations Environmental Program UNEP, to sponsor tree planting projects along the edge of the Sahara in the 1980s to halt the invasion. However, the more pressing issue is the degradation of land outside of the desert due to human abuse. This degradation occurs not from the expansion of the desert, but from mismanagement of the land by populations living outside of the desert. This mismanagement creates a vicious cycle where degraded land is overworked, further exacerbating its deterioration and leading to the cultivation or grazing of marginal or submarginal land. Now, many people are familiar with popular deserts such as the Atacama Desert in Chile, the Sahara Desert in Northern Africa and the Gobi Desert in China. However, there is another desert in Spain that is not as well known but equally fascinating. This desert is called the Tabernas Desert, located in the Andalusia region of Spain, approximately 30 kilometers north of Almeria. While it's classified as a semi-desert, it spans an impressive 280 square kilometers and receives more than 30,000 hours of sunshine each year. During the summer months, temperatures can soar as high as 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, while annual rainfall is less than 250 millimeters. Nonetheless, when it does rain in the Tabernas Desert, the downfall can cause flash floods that result in erosion, sculpting the sandstone into stunning badlands landscapes. Although not many animals and plants can survive in the area, the desert has gained popularity for its cinematic potential. Over 500 movies have been shot in the Tabernas Desert, including the famous Conan the Barbarian starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. However, Spain is facing a grave ecological issue desertification, which, as discussed previously, is the process of land turning into desert due to natural or human-made causes. Among European countries, Spain is the most prone to desertification. The National Action Programs NAPs, for the United Nations Convention for the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification states that 74% of Spain's land mass is at risk of desertification, while 18% of the country could face irreversible desertification. Within Spain, the regions of Murcia, Valencia and the Canary Islands are at the highest risk, with 90% of the territory classified as having a high or very high risk of desertification. Fortunately, there are solutions to address desertification and countries can take action to combat it. Apart from mitigating climate change, nations can regulate certain human activities that contribute to the problem, such as inefficient water use. WWF, following Spain's lead, argues that water scarcity is not the main cause of droughts. Instead, the water consumption model prioritizes the irrigation sector with poor irrigation techniques. In its report titled Chronicle of a Drought Foretold, the organization reveals that areas lacking water resort to more intensive use of groundwater, including illegal consumption, estimated at over half a million illegal wells in Spain. To tackle this issue, WWF emphasizes the need to shift irrigation towards a productive model that prioritizes quality over quantity, especially in areas where water bodies are not in good condition and where irrigation is the primary cause of the problem. The primary cause of the destruction and irreversible transformation of the land in Spain are identified by the Spanish organization Ecologistas o Nación as urbanization and construction. In order to prevent desertification, Ecologistas o Nación has called for the implementation of new policies in areas such as urban development, transportation, tourism and agriculture. They emphasize the need to convert the Spanish economic model to better protect the land. Specifically, the organization is advocating for the land law to be used as a tool to safeguard the land and avoid reclassifying it as urban land unless it is necessary to meet the population's growing needs, always taking into account the most fertile areas. We know that desertification is a process with multiple triggers, so it is necessary to address it from a very broad point of view, explained the person responsible for the Greenpeace water campaign, Julio Barria in the organization 2018 desertification report. 
it is fundamentally a problem of decoupling between natural resources and the socio-economic system that exploits them. It is above all a problem of sustainable development, concluded the activist. The desertification problem in Spain is also largely due to human activities, including over farming and excessive irrigation that causes soil erosion and depletes aquifers. Spain has a significant desertification problem as three quarters of its landmass is already generally dry or semi-arid due to destructive mining and farming techniques that wreaked havoc on the soil structure and water table. Although Spain has increased its income from agriculture in the last decade, environmentalists are concerned about the toll on the water table, as agricultural practices consume almost seven times as much water as all households in the country. As a result, once productive land is now incapable of producing enough crops to support human or animal life, and satellite imagery shows that an additional 1% of Spanish territory is actively degrading due to brutal agricultural practices. It's crucial to understand that desertification doesn't necessarily mean the desert is expanding. Rather, it refers to the misuse or overuse of natural resources at a rate that exceeds the rate of restoration. However, Spain is not sitting idly by as the problem worsens. In fact, the country has been making efforts to tackle desertification in collaboration with the industry players who are most affected by it. One example of such an initiative is Alvalau, an eco-business movement that has taken it upon themselves to restore the biodiversity of degraded areas. This organisation has set out on a massive 20-year program that focuses on more than 1 million hectares of land in Almeria, Granada and Murcia. Alvalau was started by growers and entrepreneurs who were keen on developing regenerative agricultural schemes that could be funded by foreign investors and philanthropists. They aim to nurture the soil and microbiology that have been slowly but surely annihilated. While the return from these initiatives might not be immediate and tangible results may not be seen until 2035, Alvalau is investing 1.3 million euros annually towards achieving their goals. The bitter truth is that even though the degradation of Spain's land may have occurred rapidly, reversing it will take time and money. Nonetheless, the efforts being made by organisations such as Alvalau are a step in the right direction and demonstrate a willingness to address the issue head on. The Alvalau project is not only dedicated to restoring the biodiversity of degraded areas in Spain, but experts also predict that it could have a significant impact on the local climate. The project's emphasis on planting more ecological almond trees, spanning an area the size of Madrid, and increasing water in the soil through regenerative agricultural practices could lead to greater evapotranspiration from the trees, which in turn can potentially alter the local climate. The Alvalau project is an extensive endeavour covering more than 1 million hectares of land and involves the efforts of 250 entrepreneurs, researchers and ecologically minded individuals. This massive initiative has received funding from various organisations, including the Common Land, TUI and Leopold Bachmann Foundations, to support the creation of alternative and sustainable businesses. The regenerative agriculture aspect of the project covers over 8,000 hectares, incorporating 40 farms with tree-based crops and is aimed at nurturing the soil and microbiology that have been degraded over time. Alvalau is committed to expanding its reach and hopes to double the area where it is active in just two years. Furthermore, the Dutch NGO Common Land has garnered success in reversing desertification in both Africa and Australia. With a wealth of experience under its belt, Common Land has decided to offer its expertise to Spain, specifically targeting the plateau of Almeria after reviewing several applications from concerned landowners. This region was deemed a priority due to the severity of erosion and depopulation that has occurred, both of which have contributed to the desertification process. Common Land's approach is centred around empowering rural communities to take charge of their own destinies and actively participate in the restoration efforts. This community-based model has proven successful in other regions, such as the Great Green Wall of Africa in the Sahil region. This initiative combines the reforestation of large areas with rural development projects, effectively halting the spread of the Sahara and reviving degraded landscapes. Alvalal has already planted thousands of trees on the slopes of La Muella in an effort to combat desertification on multiple fronts. 
This includes tackling soil erosion, promoting regenerative agriculture, implementing sustainable livestock operations, conserving water and reversing depopulation. The problem of depopulation looms large in this area as individuals often leave places where they are unable to earn a livelihood. As an illustration, Villas Blanco, which had a population of 7,000 in the 1950s, now has only a mere 2,000 inhabitants. Common Land is aware that farmers need to be motivated to continue their involvement in the project, as they may not persist if they don't see a way to turn a profit. Therefore, the organisation emphasises the importance of investing in local companies that are committed to sustainable development. This strategy will not only benefit the environment, but will also provide a financial incentive for farmers to remain in the area and participate in the restoration efforts. By supporting local businesses that prioritise ecological practices, Common Land aims to promote a culture of sustainability that can sustainably revive degraded landscapes and attract people back to the region. The efforts to revive the degraded lands in Spain have not gone unnoticed, and many businesses and individuals are playing their part in the campaign. La Almendrejeza is one such example of a company that has taken up the challenge of sustainable agriculture and is now reaping the rewards. Its brand, Pepita Oro, is being exported to countries like the UK and Germany at a premium price, with organic almonds selling for as much as 7.5 euros per kilogram, compared to the standard price of £4.5 per kilo. Individual farmers are also doing their bit to restore the land. Many have willingly changed their farming practices to help the soil recover from years of degradation. They have planted various grass and leguminous plants to bring nitrogen back to the soil and have perfected a vegetation cover technique over the last seven years to eliminate the use of plastic in greenhouses. Furthermore, they are embracing regenerative agriculture, which focuses on soil health and involves minimal ploughing as well as environmentally friendly practices. Previous generations of farmers used toxic pesticides that have since been banned, leading to the loss of fertile topsoil at an alarming rate of over 20 tonnes per hectare on average. However, this generation of farmers has seen the negative effects of these practices and is now opting for more sustainable and eco-friendly agricultural practices. In addition to combating soil degradation, the issue of depopulation in rural areas is being addressed by incentivising farmers to participate in the campaign through financial support for local sustainable businesses. Spain's impressive effort to fight desertification has inspired other countries to emulate their approach. One such example is of Alfonso Chico de Guzman's farm, which has been passed down through his family for generations. Alfonso has joined forces with Alvalau's programs, contributing to the land restoration camp that he operates on his 1,000 hectare farm, La Jonquera. This camp has become a popular destination for volunteers from all over the world who come to learn about regenerative agriculture and contribute to the effort to combat desertification. Alfonso's farm also hosts a regenerative academy that serves as a hub for foreign students who are writing their research theses on agriculture. It is evident that Spain's successful approach to combating desertification has garnered international attention and recognition, with others keen to learn and replicate their methods. The efforts of individuals like Alfonso, who are actively contributing to the cause, will go a long way in ensuring that Spain's success story is sustained and replicated globally. The Spanish government has also recently unveiled a comprehensive multi-year plan to combat desertification in the country, which involves various stakeholders such as national and local authorities, researchers, non-government organisations, farmers and more. The plan, known as the National Strategy for the Battle Against Desertification ENLD, is set to continue until 2030 and aims to promote biodiversity and ecological resilience in Spain's driest regions while restoring degraded soil. According to a press release from the ENLD, the ultimate objective of the plan is to preserve and recover the natural capital related to the dry and semi-arid areas of Spain and work towards neutrality in land degradation by preventing and mitigating desertification and restoring degraded areas. The Andalusia region, which is known for being the largest olive oil producing area in the world and home to many of the world's super high density olive groves, is among the most at risk territories. The ENLD has identified intensive agriculture, livestock grazing and over-exploitation of water resources as the main drivers of desertification. 
To combat this, the national strategy will establish a network of experimental areas for land restoration and promote best practices in water resource conservation, soil conservation, land management and forestry. By taking these measures, the ENLD hopes to increase the ecological resilience of Spain's dry areas, protect biodiversity and prevent further land degradation. Spain's new strategy to combat desertification not only aims to restore and recover affected areas, but also emphasizes the importance of prevention and early warning systems. According to Gabriel del Barrio, a desertification expert, restoration can be successful only on mildly degraded land, while extreme degradation can take decades or centuries to recover. Therefore, the best approach is to avoid reaching extreme levels of land degradation in the first place. To achieve this, maximizing land management options can be a plausible approach that increases land value and farmers' resilience in the long run. It involves reducing vegetation turnover, increasing biomass and letting soil organic carbon accumulate in the topsoil. By implementing such management criteria, land can be used in a way that has the potential to be changed to other land uses, making the land more productive and adaptable to changing environmental conditions. The new strategy also calls for creating a national atlas of desertification, a public information platform and a national council overseeing efforts to reverse desertification. Deserts are fascinating ecosystems that have adapted to their harsh environments over time. But desertification is a completely different story. Desertification happens when land is overexploited, leading to soil exhaustion and other factors that reduce biodiversity and return the landscape into a simplified version of its former self. While climate change isn't the only driver of desertification, it can exacerbate the impact of human-driven overexploitation. Climate change can deplete water and other slow renovating natural resources, and the speed of change may prevent ecosystems from adapting. According to Gabriel del Barrio, the rate of climate change is happening too quickly for these systems to adapt. Additionally, intensive agricultural practices, particularly irrigation, have become increasingly common, which exacerbates the problems caused by desertification. In Spain, irrigated land has increased enormously, occupying approximately 40,000 square kilometers and being responsible for 80% of the total water consumption in the country. With reservoir capacity remaining constant, and aquifers gradually depleting, the safety margin against droughts and other adverse weather events is becoming dangerously reduced. This highlights the need for early warning and prevention measures to avoid extreme levels of land degradation. Furthermore, in June of last year, Spain experienced a scorching heatwave, one of the worst in recent years. The National Meteorological Agency warned citizens and farmers of the hot summer to come, and the temperatures were indeed abnormal. Jose Angel Nunez Mora, head of climatology at the Meteorological Center in Valencia, explained that the warm air mass from North Africa brought temperatures typical of July or August and that some observatories exceeded 40 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, this is becoming a pattern. Record temperatures and historic heat waves in 2017 and 2019 have become more common, and the International Panel on Climate Change IPCC, has been warning for two decades that an increase in average temperature would lead to an exponential increase in very hot days and the frequency of heatwave days. Nunez Mora warns that climate data collected over the past few years shows that these warnings are coming to fruition. The implications of this increase in temperature and the heat waves are vast. It's not just about feeling uncomfortably hot or sweating more than usual. Changes in one component of the Earth's system, such as the atmosphere, can have far-reaching impacts on other subsystems, particularly biodiversity and fragile ecosystems in Mediterranean environments. It's important to understand the implications of these changes and take steps to mitigate them. Now share your thoughts on Spain's efforts to combat desertification in the comments section.